people, how are you doing? I hope you're having a fantastic damn day. Welcome back to the channel. Of course, it is a throwback Thursday, and in today's throwback Thursday, we will be talking about Eric Ten Hag's 21-22 Ajax system and team. Um, some would say it was a lot better in terms of the tactics, a lot better and more effective than the 2018-2019 tactics that we did also make a few weeks ago. If you haven't seen those, I will link it at the end of this video for you to go and replicate and recreate for your FC24 game. Um, along with the balance tactics, I've also gone ahead and done a bit more research. The attacking structure, a 3-2-2-3 system or a 3-box-3 three three system. Um, this obviously just helps with the inverted fullback, of course. Masrai would quite often invert into the midfield, help the likes of Alvarez more or less as that double pivot. And of course, then it's a more expanded offensive structure. And then also, the, the defensive layout, a 4-5-1 system. We'll be expanding and talking about how you can replicate this system as well. They would it, would it would obviously change depending on the tactics of the opposition, how they would try and break them down and try and break up the, the, the opposition's offensive outlets. So we'll talk about this system as well. Now, starting off with the balanced approach, of course, the formation is a 4-2-3-1 narrow. And as you will see, I've also narrowed the fullbacks. Now, this was to help invert them into the midfield. Of course, the offensive structure helps a lot more with that. Getting the likes of Mazraoui into the midfield, having the likes of Dali Blint invert as a more of a centre-back type player. But essentially, it is going to be one goalkeeper, two centre-backs, two fullbacks, two DMs, one attacking midfielder, two wingers, and then, of course, one striker. Now, with the tactical approach and the tactical vision going forward, I think Gagan pressing best suits what this team is all about. Of course, with the previous one, we went with a more of a custom approach, whereas with this one, I think Gagan pressing is best suited. Um, I think it was only Liverpool in that season that outranked them with the amount of pressures per game and the, the amount of work rates and effort that this Ajax side put in was, was up there with the best of them. So, Gagan pressing best suits this side. As for the defensive structure, of course, with the Gagan pressing, it goes hand in hand with the pressing after possession loss. They would look to try and clog the, the central areas of the field, try and flood men forward, try and win that ball back as effectively and quickly as possible when they would lose it. The work rate of every single player in the side was effortless. As for the team width, it is set to 10. A very compact and narrow structure, making sure that they flooded a lot of the opportunities to the opposition into those wider areas of the field where inevitably crosses would be whipped into the box. You had a very good goalkeeper in the likes of Onana slash Pasvia. of course that was the season where Onana got suspended or he had been suspended um so Pasvia wasn't the like incredible he wasn't Thibaut Courtois levels but he was decent at being able to you know detour any crosses that were fired into the box as well as your center back pairing of the likes of Timber Martinez you had Alvarez dropping into the central areas of the pitch in a deeper role winning those headers and of course you got Dali Blint so a very effective um, unit, you could say, to try and prevent those crosses from turning into scoring opportunities. As for the depth, however, it is here to 80. Of course, this is considered a high line, um, and this goes hand in hand with the possession stats of trying to win the ball back, hype the field. You can have a lot of players high up as well. So when it comes to trying to turn the ball over quickly and efficiently, you have quite a few men forward, as well as having your wing backs and your wingers trying to pin the opposition back in their own half, having them nice and hype the field for the offensive outlets. Now, speaking of the offensive outlet, the offensive side of things, the builder player, I've gone with fast build-up. Now, again, this does fit really well with the Gagan pressing system. They would look to try and work the ball quite quickly into the central areas of the field and then out wide to the wingers or potentially uh, a roaming fullback if required. Um, and then obviously try and work it quickly into the, the or just in behind the opposition's backline to try and exploit them as best and as quick as possible. As for the transcreation, it is set to direct passing now. Ajax were quite well known for their short, quick five-yard passes, those little triangles forming in and around. But as well as that, they weren't afraid, especially with this side going long, having the likes of Martinez or Timber, two very good ball-playing centre-backs, having that long ball approach, that in-behind ball to the likes of Anthony or Tadic or um, Berghaze, or maybe even the likes of uh, Sebastian Haller, who was a more out-and-out -out number nine, which we hadn't actually seen up until this point um, with this Ajax side, of course. Uh, with the previous set of instructions, they kind of had like a, a rotational number nine where he wasn't an out and out nine, he was more of a false nine, whereas the likes of Sebastian Haller, if things weren't working out, if their, their quick interchanging passing, the quick movements wasn't there, they would look to try and go a bit longer or potentially try and whip in a lot more crosses into the box for their strong number nine, who I think that season may have finished as the top goal scorer in the Champions League, or at one point he was definitely the top goal scorer. So 
and it was his first season at Ajax. So you know what? It worked out very, very well for them. But anyway, with the direct passing, they would look to go a bit long, a bit quicker, have the wingers look to try and penetrate the back line in behind, trying to exploit that space, as well as the likes of Hele in certain moments. As for the width, it is set to 70. Now, this does stretch a lot um, and open up a lot more space for the likes of Hale, as well as your wingers to try and work into, work into those little half spaces, as well as allowing you to try and flood the midfield with an extra man. And we will see this with the offensive structure, whereas you fit the likes of your right back. This it, It's wrench for, for this system, but essentially it was the likes of Mazraoui fitting into the midfield. So you would essentially have four midfield players in and around there. So you need a bit more space. So in order to do that, 70 width does generate enough space for the system. As for players in the box, however, it does vary, but I've gone with a solid 7, um, allowing for the likes of Hilaire as well as your wingers and sometimes even your number 10 to be able to break into the box and crash in on those crosses or cutback opportunities. As for the corners and the free kicks, as for always, it is set to 4. Now, taking a look at the instructions for your goalkeeper, starting off at the back with him. Um, now, of course, this was past Via, so at the time, he wasn't like, the, he he was, what, 38? He's now close to, like, 41, 42, something like that. Um, I might be a bit off with age, but regardless, he is quite up there in age. So he's not the best at being able to be super physical and dominant and claim those aerial balls. So I think a more balanced approach best replicates his realistic um, goalkeeping attributes, as well as saving outside of the box with an Eric Ten Hag system just in general. You need to be able to play out from the back, have... The, a, a calm sense to your ability to pass out uh, under pressure from the opposition. So we've seen it with Onana at Manchester United, very good at passing out from the back, supposedly. I haven't seen it just yet, but that's more or less what Ten Hag wants. Um, so you need to be able to be focused under pressure, more or less that is what they were um, at that stage with this Ajax side. As for your two centre-backs, for, for this balanced approach, this balanced game plan, they are set to their base set of instructions, so no major changes to it. But the likes of Sosa, who is obviously taking up the role of Dali Blintz. Um, so he is set to join the attack, of course, but for the run type, it's going to be invert. So more so, yeah, and obviously with the offensive structure comes into play, he shifts into that centre-back role. But when they were looking just to get themselves involved in the game off the, the, the kick-offs and whatnot, you would see the likes of Dali Blint would like drift slightly wider, link up quite effectively with the likes of Tadic, and he was allowed to roam and drift into those wider areas of the pitch, which is exactly why and how we're trying to do this here. So yes, he would invert and link up with the likes of um, Gravenberch and Alvarez, but at the same time also allowed to have the freedom to drift slightly wider. As for the defensive positioning, it is set to stick to position. And then onto your right back, of course, this is Mazraoui, also set to join the attack as well as invert, and he would do a lot more of the inverting into the midfield. Um, as for the defensive positioning, just like with Blint, it is said to stick to position. Now, moving on into our midfield, of course, um, at the time it was Alvarez as well as Gravenberch, who is now playing for Liverpool, and Alvarez is now playing for West Ham, doing very, very good jobs, I will say this. So, starting off with the Alvarez role, the defensive behavior is set to a balanced approach, so yes, he can be a bit more zonal, yes, he can be a bit more of a man-to-man -man type player, so that's why a balanced approach best suits him. For the attacking support, with the, the goalkeeper restarts and whatnot, of course, it would always be short passes, very seldomly going very long with it. And more so, Alvarez would try and drop into that space and collect the ball off of the back four or off of the goalkeeper. So in order to try and replicate that type of role, for the attacking support, he needs to be able to stay back while attacking, also looking to try and cover the, the back four when required. The interceptions is set to normal. Now, you can probably get away with them being set to aggressive, but I think a, a more normal approach best suited because this team can be exposed at times um, if you do turn the ball over. So that's why a normal approach best suits him. And just like I was saying, having him as a deep line playmaker, of course, he's not going to be able to spray balls uh, 40 or 50 yards, but at the same time, to have him be able to drop into the space or the little half spaces in and around your defensive third, it's a necessity so he can be able to get onto the ball, turn, drop a shoulder, and then progress it forward. As for the defensive position, now I've told him to cover the wing, and this will more so try and cover the likes of Blint or the likes of Mazraoui if they have gone too far forward. And also that it also helps him try and interchange positions in a way with having him drop into the back line in certain moments, trying to pick up those wider areas of the field, track the runners, as well as have the likes of Mazraoui or Dali Blint shift into the midfield. Onto the likes of Gravenberch now, a more attacking of the two sixes. So... He said to cut past hands a bit more zonal to his game, but for the attacking supports, a balanced approach. So having the ability to help the likes of Alvarez um, with the, the defensive restarts and goalkeeper kicks and stuff, and also having the ability to get forward, get into the box, be a bit more aggressive with his attacking outlets. 
The interceptions is set to aggressive and this helps with the counter pressing system that we are trying to run with this side. And then obviously the positioning freedom is set to stick to position. It was a very rigid and structural type system. It's not very fluid like the previous system where you had uh, a rotating front four and Tadish was playing as the false nine and it's not exactly like that. It's a very structured approach. He needs to maintain his position more times than not. And then for the defensive positioning, it is set to cover the wing, often looking to try and help pick up those wider players from the opposition and prevent crosses being fired into the box. Onto the likes of Berghais, of course, still in the Ajax side. So he is set to come back on defense, looking to try and link up as effectively uh, with the number sixes as he would with the number nine and the two wingers. And the support on crosses is set to balance, so we do see him quite often making that run into the box, breaking into the box, attacking the crosses or the cutbacks. And um, there was this one freeze frame that I did see of him uh, where Ajax were working this ball out wide. Gravenberch had it on the, the left wing and then he like fired a cross in. Berghase landed on it and he fired it home. And more so, you're trying to replicate that type of run pattern and structure. So balanced crossing runs best suits him. So for the number 10's positioning freedom, I've gone with the free roam roll. And that will help him pop up in the little half spaces, draw players out of position, open up a lot more space for either the wingers or potentially the roaming Gravenbosch to get forward and work into, or maybe even the likes of your number nine and Sebastian Hilaire having a bit more space in and around him. So more so you want your number 10 in this role. And then finally for the interceptions, just like with most of your front four slash front five at times, it is going to be set to aggressive interceptions. So now moving on to your wingers, of course, both of them have the same set of instructions, both Tadic and Anthony at the time were told to come back and help out as much as possible on the defensive side of things. So a, a very strong work rate applied to the entirety of this side. The chance creation is to stay wide and we currently see this with the, the Manchester United system currently, um, where the wingers are told to stay wide and then try and work their way and attack um, the, the opposition fullback one-on-one, -on -one, try and get them out into those wider spaces. And essentially what this does is it opens up a lot of space in between the centre-back and the fullback for either your inverting fullback to try and work into, or potentially one of your number sixes to try and make that extending run a little bit deeper into the offensive side of things. Um, for the support runs, it is set to a balanced approach. So yes, both Anthony and the likes of Dusan Tadic can come a bit shorter, link up a bit more, have a, a bit more of a, of, a, of a half space attacking role or potentially using their pace, getting in behind. I know Tadic was not the fastest of wingers, but the likes of Anthony does have a lot of pace to burn. And especially at that time when he had the confidence to do so, he was very, very good. Um, Tadic, I would say, was probably more of a come short type player or maybe even a bit of a target man um, on the, the wider left hand channel having the ability to hold the ball up, link up quite effectively in that wider left hand side. As for the interceptions, it is set to aggressive and then the support on crosses is set to balance. So sometimes hanging on the edge of the box looking to try and facilitate, other times breaking into the box and trying to attack the goal. As you can see for the likes of Anthony, he's got the same set of instructions as well. And then finally onto your big number nine, Sebastian Haller. He's set to stay central and be a target man. Like I said earlier, when the plan A was not working, they went with plan B, and plan B was very, very effective. The ability to try and beat their man one-on-one -on -one from those wider areas of the field, whether it was their fullback, the number six, the, the number 10, beat their man, and then whip an across to try and supply it for their big, strong, physical striker, who was an out-and-out -out number nine target man. Very good at backing into the opposition, holding them off, being very physical with them, linking up play very effectively with the number 10 and the two wingers around him. Um, and more so, the ability to try and feed him was always, always there. The interceptions is set to aggressive, and then finally, the defensive support, he is going to be your out ball with the quick, swift counter-attacking movements. So when Ajax would attack, right, they would try and set up in this structure right here, the 3 double two, 3 system, and then this obviously opened up a lot more space for their attackers to try and flourish with, as well as getting the best out of the players in the squad. So for the formation going forward, I used the base formation of a 3-4-3 flat, and then I've obviously altered a few positions. I've made the centre-back slightly wider, I've brought in the, the wingers or the wider midfielders and made them more of an attacking midfield, as you can see there with the two number 10s. And then of course, I've made the two wingers slightly wider. So essentially it is one goalkeeper, three center backs, two DMs, two attacking midfielders, one striker, and then of course two wingers. Now moving on to the tactics, of course the tactical vision is still set to Gagan pressing with the defensive style still set to pressing after possession loss. Of course I will stress to say that with the attacking structure in play, 
I think it's more effective, the counter-pressing system. Of course, you do have a bit more men in the midfield, so it does clog those lanes. And I will also say you can definitely get exposed if the opposition work the ball into those wider areas of the field. So make sure you are keeping an eye on that. And if they do so, try and switch to one of your central defensive midfielders and then try and pull them out of position like that, opposed to taking one of your center backs and doing so. I think it's a bit more effective and a very dominant way of trying to defend with the attacking structure in play. As for the team width and the depth, there are two major changes to it. So we'll start off with the team width being set to 40. Now, obviously it's a lot wider than the 10 set to the balanced approach. So essentially what I was thinking is with the thought pattern and obviously thinking of the game as well, your, your base three, your, your three central defenders, you want to try and stretch them a little bit, trying to have them prevent those uh, wider section crosses or potentially drawing one of your central defensive midfielders out into those wider sections of the field. Of course, you will discuss the instructions and they do work quite well with the side. And then obviously with the depth, it is set to 95. Now, that's a very, 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 very high line, but I think it works very well with trying to flood men forward, have uh, a lot of the opposition overloaded more times on all over the field. So. It does help, but also you can definitely be counter-attacked on. As for the offense, the builder player is set to fast build-up and the chance creation is set to direct passing. No real changes there. And we see a few variations here with the width and the offensive side of things. Slightly wider set to 75 this time, opening up a bit more space. Of course, you will consistently always have four players in your midfield. So you need to, you need to try and cater for that amount of space. And you do so by trying to draw the opposition out into those wider sections of the field. And then finally, the players in the box are set to eight. Slightly more this time, you'll consistently also have four players in and around the box, namely your three attackers and your number 10, or sometimes even um, the likes of Gravenberch, who is also a number 10. So one of your number 10s will definitely be in and around the box. As for corners and free kicks, as for always, it is set to four. Now moving on to the instructions at the back with the goalkeeper, he's got the same set of instructions, still balanced and being a sweeper keeper, and it's more applicable with this structure in play. So obviously the high line, you need a very active and proactive goalkeeper to be able to claim the ball, play those under pressure passes, work out um, the, the, the ways to try and beat the first line of the press as well. And I will say this, when you do have um, the keeper and the ball in his possession, please don't make mistakes, because if the opposition do overload in certain areas and win the ball back, you're pretty much screwed and you will definitely concede more times than not. But speaking of which, moving on to your defense, we've got the likes of Jurian Timber, um, Martinez, and then of course Dali Blint. So we'll start off with Dali Blint. In this wider center back type role, he's here to overlap. So trying to join in those wider channels in certain moments, as well as the interceptions is set to conservative. Now I've done this to try and make sure that he is at least one of the structurally sound center backs of the three trying to make sure that he is always in position not trying to overcommit too much with the interceptions or the aggressiveness towards the opposition and then finally defensive position is here to stick to position as for the likes of martinez now of course i know quite well at manchester united he's very aggressive very imposing and in order to try and do this he was also like this at ajax by the way um so in order to try and do this aggressive interceptions and step up as well as the attacking support is here to stay back while attacking now we'll also say this both oh, all three of blint Timber as well as Martinez are all very, very, very good ball playing centre backs. Very good with the ball at their feet, very technically gifted, has the ability to beat a, the, the first line of the press, maybe even the second, progress the ball into the midfield, play those long balls over the top. So with any of these three centre backs, you are quite capable of playing out from the back. And then obviously moving on to the likes of Jaren Timber, a similar role to what Dali Blint would do overlap as well as conservative interceptions and then of course stick to position now moving on to your defensive midfield of course the likes of wrench slash masrawi uh, playing as a more inverted fullback slash as an actual dm so for the defensive behavior for him i've told him to have a bit more of a balanced approach not overly committed to the zonal or the man-to-man -man marking can do a bit of both the attacking support is here to stay back while attacking obviously looking to try and protect as much of this back three as possible um, as well as if one of the back threes, say Blintz or the likes of uh, Timber did progress forward, or maybe even Martinez in certain moments, the likes of Alvarez or the likes of Masrawi would just shift into the back line when required. But of course, you can't always do that. Um, interceptions is set to normal, so you, so you don't want him doing too much with the likes of the aggressive Alvarez next to him. So he is the more calm, controlled of the two. And then the positioning freedom is set to being a deep line playmaker. Both Alvarez and the likes of Masrawi would look to try and show for the ball from the goalkeeper restarts or potentially looking to try and show support for 
the three center backs when they were in possession of the ball looking to try and get on the ball as best as possible and then obviously progress it forward and then the defensive position for this man right here is set to cover the wing obviously looking to try and shift into those wide areas pick up those runners prevent those crosses from being fired into the box Onto to the likes of Alvarez now, he is set to cut past lanes, drop between the defenders in certain moments um, for the attack, obviously with the goalkeeper restarts, he was the, the main guy to try and show for that, as well as when in the attack he would be the deeper of the two center, uh, central defensive midfielders, um, linking up quite effectively with the likes of uh, Martinez and, and Timber and Dali Blins in certain moments. And now for the interceptions, I've gone with aggressive interceptions, and that's more or less trying to replicate his aggressive nature alongside the likes of Martinez. Um, they were a no BS duo, you could definitely say. Um, for the positioning freedom as well, just like with the likes of Masrawi, he is said to being a deep line playmaker. And then finally, for the defensive position, he was the out and out shield of the side. Uh, of obviously looking to try and protect the back three with the likes of Masrawi shifting into that right um, wider channel to try and pick up those runners. Um, onto your two number 10s now, of course, the likes of Graven Birch. He is set to a basic defensive support as well as a balanced approach for the crossing run. So yes, making it into the box every now and then. For the positioning freedom, he is set to free roam. And then finally, the interceptions is set to aggressive. Onto the likes of Burghase, he's got the same set of instructions as well. Um, obviously, both your number 10s, you want tr to try and have them operating in those little half spaces between the striker and the winger. So obviously trying to attack those wider areas of the field um, when the space was opened up for them. Onto your wingers now, uh, basically the same as your balanced approach, but obviously more effective because they're a little bit more higher up the field and they will be very, very important to this attacking structure. So for both Anthony as well as Dusan Tadic, they are set to come back on defense. Obviously, there's no fullbacks in this role, so you need your wingers to track back as much as possible. Staying wide is essential as well as the support runs being set to balanced. And then finally, interceptions is set to aggressive and then a balanced approach for the crossing runs. As you can see for the likes of Dusan Tadic, he's got the same set of instructions as well. Onto your striker now. Obviously, again, a very similar role. Um, having him stay central, you want everybody around him to be moving around, but you want your striker to be the focal point of the attack. Whether it's bouncing a ball into him, having him hold it up and then bounce it back to the player, or whether it's having him run into the box and attack that central spot and trying to obviously score the crosses or the cutbacks. He was the, the focal point, especially in this system, of trying to score those goals. Um, so of course he is going to be a target man, aggressive interceptions are set to be on for him. And then finally, stay forward. Just like with before, he is going to be the outlet ball more times than not. Now moving on to the defensive structure and obviously Ten Hag would, would alter this depending on if it was a back five that they were up against or a, a 4-2-3-1, it would definitely change. But essentially they would try and revert into this structure and formation when they were trying to either see out a game, make sure the opposition couldn't break them down in, an, in a game quite early. Um, so they were very, very effective when reverting into this formation. Speaking of which, the formation is a 4-5-1 flat. I've made no major changes to it, apart from just making sure that the fullbacks are a bit more narrow, and that does help with the defensive outlet. Um, so it's one goalkeeper, two center backs, two fullbacks, three central midfielders, two wider midfielders, and then of course one striker. So moving on to the tactics now, as you can see here, the tactical vision is still set to Gagan pressing with the defensive style still set to pressing after possession loss. The first major change that we do see is the team width being set to five. It's a lot more narrow and you will definitely be susceptible to those crosses being fired into the box. But because you'll have so many players in and around that area, you don't actually need to worry too much. As for the depth, it is now on the verge of a low block slash mid block, but it's set to 30 and it does and is very effective with trying to see out certain score lines or games or trying to just prevent the opposition from scoring. I mean, the amount of bodies that will be thrown in front of potential shots or crosses is, is crazy to me. Like, it's a very, very, very effective um, system to uh, try and use in this game uh, specifically. Onto the offensive side of things now, of course, the build-up play is still set to fast build-up with the direct passing set for the chance creation. Now, I will say this, it's a bit more effective having those runners getting behind trying to exploit the opposition backline. Um, so direct passing does come into a bit more of an effective role for this defensive unit. As for the width, it is now back to 70 with players in the box now set to forward. Only committing two or three players every now and then forward when in this role. Of course, it will be more counter-attacking. So keep that in mind, the likes of Hale and maybe one of your number 10s or one of your wingers making that adventurous run forward. And then finally, as for players or corners and free kicks, sorry, um, it is set to four. On 
Onto your instructions now, the goalkeeper still sets to the same set of instructions, whereas your two centre backs, um, slightly differing roles. The likes of Timber set to conservative interceptions and step up, of course, getting nice and tight to his man when required. No space in the box at all. Whereas the likes of Martinez, of course, he's still trying to create that aggressive nature, so he'll still have aggressive interceptions on as well as step up. And then out wide to your fullbacks, both of them will have the same instructions as well. So a balanced attacking support, so not always getting forward, not always looking to try and support in the attack. Normal interceptions will be on for them, as well as the run type set to inverts, creating a nice, narrow, compact system um, with the, the team width on the defensive side of things being set to 5. And then also, defensive position is set to stick to position. As you can see here for the right back, he has got the same set of instructions as well. Now onto your wingers, both the likes of Anthony as well as Tadic have the same set of instructions. So both are told to come back on defense, helping out the fullback in those wider areas as much as possible. And they will be responsible for trying to track either the, the fullback or the winger in those wider sections of the field. Staying wide is essential, especially for the out there ball, trying to open up a bit more space when going forward. The support run is still set to balance as well as aggressive interceptions. And of course, this time being able to break into the box consistently, making sure that they are making those deeper runs into the attacking third. As you can see here for the likes of Tadic, he has got the same set of instructions as well. Into your midfield now, we'll start off at the base of it with the likes of Alvarez. He's said to stay back while attacking, stay on the edge of the box for the crosses, obviously not committing himself to get forward too much. Aggressive interceptions are still set to be on for him, as well as the ability for him to consistently and solely cover the central areas of the pitch. The positioning freedom is also set to stick to position, whereas the likes of Gravenberch, as well as Berghaze, have slightly differing roles. So, Similar, but not exactly the same. So for the likes of Gravenberch, obviously taking up a bit more of a, a defensive midfielder slash number six role. So he is here to stay back while attacking, stay on the edge of the box, obviously also not committing too much forward. Aggressive interceptions, trying to match Alvarez's work rates when out of possession of the ball. And then of course, this time he's here to cover the wing and then positioning freedom is here to free roam. As for the likes of Berghaze, the more attacking of the three, so for the attacking support, it's set to balance. So yes, having the ability to drop deeper when required or having the ability to venture forward when in possession of the ball. Um, the support on cross is also set to a balanced approach. So yes, he can stay on the edge of the area looking to try and facilitate or potentially break into the box with the likes of Sebastian Hilaire. As for the interceptions, it is set to aggressive, trying to show a bit more of an aggressive nature to and, and work rates to the trying to win the ball back. And then finally, cover the wing and free room, just like with Graven Birch. And then we have got our number nine, Sebastian Hilaire, a different role completely compared to the previous two. And um, so for the support runs, he is set to a balance with. So yes, having the ability to drift into those wider channels if required, or potentially having the opportunity to stay a bit more central and having a cross whipped into him. The attacking runs is set to get in behind the sum. So not concerned or worried about trying to be a target man this time, looking to play off of the shoulder of the back line of the opposition and trying to exploit them as best as he could. Interceptions is set to aggressive, so still trying to lead a bit of a press going forward, trying to pressurize either the goalkeeper or the back line into forcing them into making a mistake, and hopefully this side can capitalize off of it. And then finally, still going to be able to stay forward and be very much the out there ball when required. And there you have it guys, that is how I would replicate Eric Ten Hag's 21-22 season Ajax tactics in the game FC24. Of course, as always, if you have enjoyed this video, smash the like button, subscribe if you are new. I know some of you guys have been asking for like a little while now for these tactics. A lot of research has gone into it, a lot of time and, and trying to make sure I'm trying to replicate the correct system, the correct player tactics, the instructions. So again, a, a like would be very, very much appreciated. Um, I know, like I say, some of you guys have been asking for these tactics for a while, so please let me know down below if they meet your standards, your requirements, and I'll obviously hop onto the next one. I will also say this, there is going to be another video out later, another Throwback Thursday video. Obviously, I missed last week, so I'm trying to catch up. Um, but anyways, guys, out of 10, I would give this, I would give this system a solid none. I think I think a nine is 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 necessary because I really really liked the the first Eric Ten Hag tactics uh, throwback Thursday tactics that I made. So this one, it a lot of people say it's a lot it's a it's a better system. But in terms of FT twenty four standards, I like the previous one a lot more. The the defensive structure, the ability to play from the back, having De Jong drop into the the back line and then progress it forward. Whereas this, it's it's a lot more structured, like I have said in the video. Um, and it, it's it's not it's it's not as fun as the original um, 2018-19 tactics that he did use, um, but nonetheless a very effective system. Of course, we've got three different tactical setups, and all of them are very very effective, which 
warrants the the nine rating so if you guys can let me know down below what you would rate this system out of that would be damn near perfect as well as i hope you guys have a damn great day i'm out <laughs>